Hey everyone, Brandon here with My Comic Universe. And Brian here with My Comic Universe. And we're here to talk about the Flash War. That's right. Again. Again. All right, well, it just <laughs> ended, so we thought we'd, you know, come back to this topic. Yeah, um, the last time we talked about a few points that were made that we made about the story in the beginning, the prelude, the lead up, and now we want to talk a little bit about the conclusion of everything. Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about what we talked about on the last video. A little recap for people. Uh, this was the beginning of the Flash War, a little bit of the prelude. Uh, basically, we talked about the relationship between Eobard Thawne and Hunter Zolomon, mm -hmm. the relationship between Barry and Wally, and basically the tension that was building up between Barry and Wally. Right. We talked about uh, Iris being accused for uh, killing Eobard Thawne. Exactly, I know a little yeah. bit of a spoiler there, folks. <laughs> but uh, it, she killed him in the 25th century with that black hole gun. Yeah, exactly, That was yeah. really cool. Um, we also learned uh, why Wally's been so hesitant to bring everyone back into his life after being gone for so long. Exactly. Um, you know, and, and it's really just set up this whole like mystery about what's what's Wally going through and where he's been this whole time, you know? Exactly. Yeah, it's been a really cool lead up so far. Joshua Williamson has been doing a great job on the Flash so and far. And Howard Porter's art is really good on Yeah, this. exactly. Like he they've been doing such a great job on the Flash. It's have been you, one of my favorite rebirth series. Right. Today. Have you been getting the Matina covers that came with it? Yes, I have. Francisco uh, Matina the, has been doing some great work on those covers. Yeah, since they started those covers a little before Flash War, I've been picking up all of those. Yeah, definitely. All right, so we kind of went back on a little bit about what we talked about last time. So now we're going to go into the discussion of what's happening at this point in the Flash War story. And let's talk a little bit about the conclusion of it all. All right. So, so yeah, it gets a little bit more into... Well, we're, last time we took, uh, we ended up at uh, Wally. He got sucked away from everyone else when they went to the future. Right. They so, were heading to the future to with Iris, so that way they can clear her name from killing Eobard. Exactly. So, I mean, the Renegades, they seem like they were good. You know, they they said that they were like this police force from the 25th century, but they had meta powers. Exactly. Um, but it seemed hard to trust because they, you know, seemed just like the rogues from the present. But, you know, Wally, Barry, and uh, the other Wally wanted to join along with Iris to make sure that things were okay. And when they got there, mm -hmm. Wally was gone. And, uh, well, you missed one important thing. There was already that tiff between Barry and Wally about, like, should, do we trust these guys? Can we believe them? I yeah. mean, we've never believed these these guys when they were rogues. Now that they're renegades and they, they're museum police or time police, we got to believe what they tell us. Like, Wally was very hesitant to do that. He doesn't want to even let anybody, even strangers, into his life. Yeah, exactly. And he just grabs Iris and runs off. Yeah. And then we see one of the coolest moments where uh, Golden Glider has a yellow ring. She's right, a yellow we talked lantern. about that, and she's a yellow lantern. That was pretty cool, too. Yeah, that too. was awesome. But, uh, yeah, like you said, uh, Hunter pulls Wally uh, out of the t out of the time yeah, travel Yeah, so basically force. Hunter Zolomon messed with Captain Cold's uh, like temporal portal or whatever they call right. it. And uh, so Wally got sucked somewhere. It seemed like this I think lost... He Parts. Yeah. I don't know. They had like all of this lost stuff from the Flash Museum, like basically mm -hmm. all of Wally's past. Right. It showed times of him being Kid Flash. It showed him with his wife. He showed his kids. It he was almost like a purgatory like place of the Flash Museum from the Wally West Wing. Yeah, right? exactly. It was just like he was just seeing all these memories and and past uh, instances where he actually used his powers. Yeah. So, and so then he started, you know, remembering his children, and now he's on this mission to go find his children and bring them back if this is true. And that's when uh, Hunter tells him that you have to break the speed force in, or in order to bring uh, his son and daughter, uh, Jai and, and Iru, is that? Iru, yeah. yeah. To bring them back, and in order to do that, you have to break the speed force. Yeah, and then so Barry's just like, yeah, how can you trust this guy? You know, we, you know, we've never trusted them before, or this guy before. You know, he's exactly. always been against us. It's all these these strangers that from their past that have betrayed them or they've done them wrong, and now all of a sudden they have to trust in them. It's it's very very like confusing for for anybody to to. But it, it buys into that keep your enemies, your friends close, but your enemies closer kind of thing. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how, like, the bad guys will, like, use the good guys to get their way. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm trying to get you something that you want, but really I have this other ulterior motive. And, yeah, so Hunter Zolomon ends up with powers again. 
Barry starts freaking out on them, you know, when Wally's not there when they get to the future. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He grabs him uh, cold by his throat. Yeah. He's like, what did you do with him? <laughs> yeah. So that Which, was pretty cool. Like, that was pretty interesting. Like I said, we get this, like, big tension between Barry and Wally again. They do a little bit of a fight, but, yeah, really, like we said, Barry's telling him, how can you trust him? And Wally's like, even if this could possibly be true, I have to find out. Because, you know, he wants to do whatever it would take to get his kids back. Right, right. And then, of course, what happens in every Flash storyline, there's a race. Yeah, so, yeah, and then they end up having to, you know, destroy the speed barrier, the speed force barrier. Right, and the only way they could do that is just go as yeah. fast as you can, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And then, of course, uh, it started setting off all these all these temporal differences, in, 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 and it starts screwing with the universe. It yeah, and all this cool Earth. stuff happened. So this led to some interesting stuff like the Sage Force or the Strength Force, mm -hmm. things that were kind of introduced, which, you know, could possibly be the source of, like, characters like Superman Strength or something like that, right. or psychic characters in the universe. The Sage Force could be, like, the source of their powers or something. Hmm, it could be something that's interesting that for future writers to explore, you Definitely. know, down the line. That's probably why in the story, uh, Swamp Thing was all like the green is uh, is all off access, and yeah. like and magic was getting all off exactly access. from so the like, Sage Force. From yeah. the Sage Force, so that's interesting. So I thought you know? that was a really cool part. Like, I'm very curious to see like where that leads down the line because you know the Speed Force is one of my favorite parts of reading Flash stories. So then at the end, you know, the Speed Force barrier does get you know destroyed, and right, uh, we get the return of a character. Yep. Bart Allen. That's right. And it's like Bart Allen in his classic outfit, like, you know, like young. Classic like, impulse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, this is really cool. And apparently the only thing that was holding him back was the speed force barrier. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, we could possibly be getting other people in the Flash family coming back. So that's really cool. But then also at the end, they teased a new crisis. Right. That's so correct. at the end, so basically the fight between Barry, Wally, and Hunter, like, it caused a whole bunch of destruction. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Iron Heights in the 25th century was destroyed, and there was a inmate that was uh, released, and if you looked on it... it broke free. Yeah, and it said Crisis. And there was even, like, kind of like a logo or, like, an image of, like, kind of like two worlds colliding. Yeah, So, yeah. and you kind of just saw, like, a silhouette of the character, but... You know, a lot of people are thinking this could be like Dark Side or like Superboy Prime or, you know, who knows? I mean, it kind of didn't look like it could be Superboy Prime, but, you know, we don't know who this could be. And this is definitely leading up to the Heroes in Crisis event that's coming out yes, by Tom that's King. Coming soon, yeah. Yeah, so that's going to be cool. And they're teasing the death of a Flash character. Ooh. So, I mean, this, uh, this could be big. Yeah, I mean, after the Flash War, Wally West is going to the Sanctuary, which is like, uh, place for like heroes and villains to go like for like PTSD and stuff mm. like that so that's why Wally is there and so this crisis character like attacks the sanctuary and a bunch of people die interesting and well, so this could awesome. lead to the death of Wally West wow I hope not but we'll have to wait it's and possible. see so overall Brandon what did you think of the Flash Warrior what was your whole opinion of the whole story I thought it was great I mean just from the very prelude it got me like pumped like I was ready to read it like I couldn't wait to read the next issue mm -hmm. I thought it was great that it was building up from the very beginning of the Flash Rebirth it took him count everything so I thought it was a great story. The ending was pretty cool. Like, I mean, it wasn't much of a fight between Barry and Wally. Right. But I thought it was really cool how it, like, delved into a lot of the relationships between Barry and Wally and the people that are in their lives. Definitely. What about you? Overall, I enjoyed it. It was a very interesting little tale that they spun together. Um, I like the themes of family being brought together. I like that they were very dedicated to each other. Um, I do like the fact that Wally West is back and yeah. he's trying to hopefully for a while <laughs> hopefully for a while yeah and I really enjoyed that really made me happy because of the fact like I said the themes of family really brought it to me yeah, so, I mean, so overall it was a great we definitely recommend it here at My Comic Universe definitely. if you're looking for something check out The Flash War and let us know your opinions on The Flash War if you're reading along with us let us know what you thought of the Flash yeah, War. The it Eisner awesome. Awards. And the Eisner Awards, definitely. It was really, really cool this year. It was a big, big time for comic books. Comic books are making a big comeback now. Um, 
mainly because of television and movies they're really helping like push them forward but definitely uh, we got to talk about the Eisner Awards we got to talk about these uh, the main categories for sure and uh, some winners here. Why don't you quickly let everyone know what the Eisner Awards are? Well, the Eisner Awards are the comic book uh, ceremonial awards that happen at San Diego Comic-Con every year. They basically cover everything from continuing series, one-shots, artists, writers, all the bests in the industry. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, what are some of the categories that you wanted to talk well, about? The th there's some that I definitely want to talk about. Yes, there, there's uh, there's quite a few that they do. It's kind of like the Oscars in a way. There's so many categories you could go through, but definitely we want to talk about best continuing series. Now, this was a tough category because there was some really strong stories with a lot of substance in this category, but the winner was Mon the series Monstrous from Image Comics. Yeah, Monstrous actually won a lot of awards. Uh, this year for the Eisner. I did see that it was up for a few. Let me just give you a quick rundown of what Monstrous is about. It's about a teenage girl who shares a mysterious psychic link with a powerful monster. And, and while this ancient war between good and evil wages on, uh, a demon emerges to take over a new host. However, there's this understanding and this kind of control between the young girl and the demon so it's got that kind of interesting uh vibe that that venom vibe almost you know where something an inner demon is taking you over but you can still control it so i i found that to be very interesting i like the story um and i would recommend monstrous for sure yeah no definitely a really cool series one got a lot of attention at the eisner awards definitely we want to talk about best writer and best artist. yeah so best writer tom king yes Pretty yeah. good choice, actually. However, he was up against Jeff Lemire for yeah, the award. Yeah, no, and Jeff Lemire is one of my favorite writers as well, so, so definitely a lot of competition there. But I mean, Tom King, he did Batman, uh, Mr. Miracle, you know, he did a lot of good stuff, so I mean, he definitely deserved it as well. Oh yeah, and definitely also for Sheriff of Babylon yeah. as a definite like winner for him as well. Actually, I hate to break it right now, but actually this was split into two winners this time for Best oh, yeah. Writer. Yes, actually Tom King did win, win for Best Writer, but also Marjorie Lau, who wrote Monstrous, she won as well. Oh, nice. So we had two winners this year, which is, it's happened before, but it's a very rare case where that does uh, happen, where two writers win one award. And then of course we gotta talk about Best Artist which went to Mitch Gerards yeah. for Mr. Miracle. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Mr. Miracle was great, both writing and the art. So uh, yeah, Mitch Gerards and Tom King both deserved uh, wins for that book, for sure. Yes, and that's an ongoing series that you could pick up at your local comic book shop. And yeah, Mr. Miracle is one of the highest rated uh, comic book series for the DC Rebirth. So if you're looking for something to read, definitely pick up Mr. Miracle. And since we're talking about recommendations, let's get into the actual comic book recommendation for this episode. That's correct. Now, Tom King, Mitch Gerards, winners of the Eisner Awards this year, and they are definitely, their first book together, Sheriff of Babylon, is a recommendation for this episode. Yeah. Now, if you're not familiar with the story, here's a quick rundown on the synopsis of it. A former cop turned military contractor, Christopher Henry, knows that better than anyone, he's in a country to train up a new Iraqi police force, and one of his recruits has just been murdered. With civil authority in tatters and bodies clogging the streets, Chris is the only person in the green zone with any interest to find out who killed him and why. Yeah, so I mean, this is a very cool series. And for those of you that don't know, Tom King was actually in the CIA. Yeah. So this is based on some of his actual real life experiences. And that's uh, really interesting, and he's one heck of a great writer, so this is definitely one of those stories that's very action-packed, and I love a good detective story. I really do. Me too. So, so. definitely check out Bang 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 Volume 1 there of Share of a Babylon. Yeah, it's a very great first arc. I mean, the story is great. We definitely recommend it here at My Comic Universe. Well, that's everything we have for our episode here at Tox Comics. We talked all about Flash War. We finished that on up for everybody. Yeah, Flash War was awesome. It was and, cool. And, you know, we got into the Eisner Awards. The Eisner Awards. Big, big year for the Eisner Awards. Yeah. And then, of course, don't forget about our recommendation. And, of course, we'll keep you posted here about all the comic book news and insights here at 
Talks Comics and at My Comic Universe. So thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe by clicking on that subscribe button in the bottom corner. Yes. And check out our social media because we're always doing giveaways and putting up new content. Look at that social media. <laughs> All right, thanks watching. everyone. See, See ya. ya.